Hi, I'm Court Lindahl. Welcome to Mysteries and Legends of Northern California. In episode one, we're going to be taking a look at the relationship between Chico, California and the myths and legends of Mount Shasta. In 1841, John Bidwell came to California as part of one of the earliest wagon trains to head west from Council Bluffs, Iowa. In leaving Council Bluffs, Bidwell was also leaving a part of his family that had a great impact on the development of that town and state. John Bidwell would become an important pioneer of California. He first worked for John Sutter, famous for Sutter's Mill, and as the site of discovery of gold in California. Later, we may see that John Bidwell had produced a map as early as 1847 that showed the gold-bearing regions of California. Is it possible that Bidwell and, and others had been taking advantage of this resource before the beginning of the official 1849 gold rush? John Bidwell would later obtain what came to be known as Rancho Arroyo Chico. At this time, California was still part of Mexico. Subsequently, Bidwell would become a general in the California militia and be instrumental in the establishment of the California Bear Flag Republic and later in California becoming part of the United States. Bidwell created the street plan of Chico in some ways as a miniature of Washington, D.C. and its plan. The original streets of Chico were laid out as an 8x8 block pattern that resembled the chessboard. This included what was to be the Chico City Plaza and what would be the Queen Square. In 1872, using a ceremony similar to that used by Constantine, Bidwell dedicated the city plaza by plowing a circle in the earth. Constantine, in one of his legends, is said to have used the Spear of Destiny to scrape out a line in the earth designating the royal district of Constantinople. What Bidwell had done was to create an Axis Mundi, or symbol of temporal control, that included directions that had talismanic importance in the tradition of Constantine and the Towers of the Winds of Athens. This type of classic veneration and dynamic was not unusual for 19th century society. This era was in some ways the golden age of Freemasonry in the United States. The story of the Hooker Oak reveals a great deal about the family legacy of John Bidwell and how we may be led to Mount Shasta via these connections. The name of the Hooker Oak, regardless of the origins of the name, indicates a symbolic message from John Bidwell as to his family legacies. John Bidwell's biography includes his family's origins in the colonies as part of the original settlers of Hartford, Connecticut. A monument in Hartford attests to this. The leader of this group of colonists was named Reverend Thomas Hooker. Reverend Hooker and J.D. Hooker were from the same family in Old England. It appears he and John Bidwell were aware of this relation. In fact, the two families were related via a web of intermarriage in early Hartford. The history of Connecticut involves the story of the Charter Oak. Soon after Hartford was founded, the colonists were granted a charter by King James I that gave them an unusual amount of liberties compared to some of the other colonies. Later, during the era of King James II, it was decided to revoke the Connecticut Charter in favor of a charter benefiting the king more. 
In response, the charter document was taken and hidden in an oak tree in Hartford so it could not be confiscated by the new governor of New England. The charter was actually taken and hidden in the oak tree by a direct ancestor of famous poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, named Joseph Wadsworth. Poet Longfellow also played a major role in deciphering the mysteries of North America. He too would take part in the similar legacy we see being displayed by John Bidwell. Here in the story of the Hooker Oak, we are being given a somewhat veiled reference to the Connecticut heritage of John Bidwell and J.D. Hooker in the naming of an oak tree in Chico, California. It appears as if the story of the Hooker Oak is cluing us into the real origins of the Bidwell and Hooker families. Other prominent names included on the Hartford Founders Monument include Bacon, Olcott, Lewis, Adams, Allen, Arnold, Beale, Robert Beale, Associate of Bacon, Beale Treasure Family, Chaplin, Easton, Hale, Hart, Hill, Marsh, also a prominent Chico family, Olmstead, Scott, Smith, Wadsworth, Longfellow, and White. Within this list of names are a few families who would produce members that had a great impact on the spiritual values of the United States. The Bidwells and associated Hartford families hold quite a legacy in the creation of new ways of faith that reflected the values of the new country. John Bidwell's English ancestors included Knights Templar Ormus Legaidon, the Standard Bearer. Ormus heritage in turn included an ancestry that linked to Charlemagne and all the Latin kings of Jerusalem. Ormus was the seed of the Biddulph family in England. Ormus was known for having brought some of the earliest Byzantine stonemasons to come from the Levant to England. This may have included the famous Ashmore family of Ashmolean Museum fame. These stonemasons built two of the earliest churches in Staffordshire, England. St. Chad's Church in Stafford includes a founder's inscription stating Ormus had built the church. This inscription contains the Auspice of Maria symbol that is representative of the three letters AVM or Ave Maria. One of John Bidwell's ancestors from the Elizabethan age was Middle Eastern explorer and merchant William Bidolph. The Bidolph name of England evolved into the newer English and American Bidwell name. William Bidolph was one of the individuals who wrote portions of the King James Bible. John Bidwell is directly related via at least three marriages in early Hartford and environs to the family of Joseph Smith, founder of the Mormon faith. Bidwell is related in the same way to the family of Henry Steele Olcott, co-founder of the Theosophical Society and partner of famous Madame Blavatsky. Another Hartford founding family, the Lewis, who are related to famous explorer Meriwether Lewis as well as John Bidwell. This Hartford family would also eventually produce Harvey Spencer Lewis founder of the American Rosicrucian Order in San Jose, California. Bidwell also held a close family tie to the Ballard family of Guy Ballard, who founded the I Am activity at Mount Shasta.
In addition, we see members of the Hill and Lewis family being involved in other similar exploits in Williamsburg, Virginia, and then later in Minnesota. The same family group may be behind many of the mysteries of North America, including Oak Island, the Newport Tower, the Beale Treasure, Bacon's Vault in Williamsburg, and the Kensington Rune. At each site, the mystery of the involvement of these first families is evident. All of these relations, though not direct to John Bidwell, show intermarriage with the Bidwell family through time. Is it possible that this family group had worked through time to create new versions of faith that seemed to accommodate the American ideal? Okay, we've learned a lot about all of the family relations of John Bidwell and their strange connections to Mount Shasta, but in more detail, it's very interesting that Harvey Spencer Lewis, the founder of the Rosicrucian Order in San Jose, is so closely rela related to John Bidwell. We see the whole Rosicrucian Order being involved in propagating many of the myths of the hollow earth or cities beneath Mount Shasta, possibly Telos, and then some of the other theosophical overtones of uh, the Rosicrucian Order uh, links us to Henry Steele Olcott, and it's just really terribly interesting that John Bidwell is related to him. Um, Henry Olcott was also an investigator into the Lincoln assassination, which we'll cover in subsequent episodes and other works I've done concerning Washington DC and the White House Meridian but uh, it's really interesting that he's kind of involved in this creation of a new way of faith and a new way of thinking uh, with Madame Blavatsky I mean really we have one of the most well-known figures of New Age thought being related to John Bidwell so this is an incredible association along with his family um, crossover with Guy Ballard as well. All of this um, really boils down to possibly a family group that had dedicated themselves to forming new ways of faith in opposition to the more traditional forms and more specifically the Catholic Church. So it's very interesting that um, he's related to these people. And what we see is, is Henry Steele Olcott and uh, Guy Ballard kind of promoted theosophical concepts at Mount Shasta that were developed you know by this international group of people and the families that harken all the way back to the Oak Island mystery the Kensington runestone and other places of mystery in the United States like Williamsburg and Washington DC Okay, John Bidwell established an Axis Mundi in Chico at the city plaza, where the foundation stone of Chico is also located. To the northwest, the city plaza points to approximately 319 degrees to the old Bank of America building that includes a lot of uh, classical imagery that may be suggestive of a theme, and the line also crosses right over a mural of John and Annie Bidwell. As the line progresses to the northwest, it crosses the old Masonic Lodge that is now the Blue Room Theater and continues to the newer Chico Labyrinth and Children's Park right next to the church that John Bidwell had built. The line extends to Bidwell Mansion and the Gateway Science Museum as well. The logo of the Gateway Science Museum may contain the AVM symbol just as the diamond finial of the Senator Theater that is part of the array of the city plaza. The symbol is present in many mysteries and interesting situations involving the family or blood that I believe arranged all of these geographic mysteries in Chico and at Mount Shasta. Now 
know the original 8x8 block plan of Chico does resemble the original city limits of Washington DC in its square or diamond shaped form and we do see the chessboard imagery in the Chico City Plaza but ultimately we see the plaza pointing to the former property of uh, California pioneer Peter Lassen who established Benton City. Later Stanford would own the, the property and uh, the monastery of New Clairvaux would eventually uh, get the property in a donation from Stanford University. And currently in the 1930s William Randolph Hearst had elements of the monastery of Santa Maria de Ovila shipped to California. There, the chapter house of the monastery is currently being rebuilt at the monastery of New Clairvaux. It's a very interesting site. You can see 12th century Mason's Marks right here in Northern California. The Chico City Plaza points to the property of the monastery, but this alignment was probably originally meant to point to uh, John Bidwell's friend, Peter Lassen City, named Benton City after Missouri uh, Senator Benton. Again, to recap, we're finding that John Bidwell is related to William Bidolph, who produced part of the King James Version of the Bible. He's related to Henry Steele Olcott, who created Theosophy with Madame Blavatsky and others, kind of a new way of thought based on Eastern concepts such as the Ascended Masters. And we see that being applied later at Mount Shasta by Guy Ballard and his group, the I Am Activity. All of that is based on the possibility that Guy Ballard had an encounter with St. Germain on the slopes of Mount Shasta and was himself uh, evolved into an Ascended Master status himself. So his whole faith is based on that. And it's terribly interesting that um, the I Am activity now owns Shasta Springs Resort, which I feel was a place where one of these octagonal axes were placed in a series of mysteries placed along the railroads by the owners of the Great Northern Railroad who are from Minneapolis, Minnesota and Alexandria, Minnesota and may have planned the Kensington Runestone mystery in this tradition. Well, part of what we're seeing here is the creation of an Axis Mundi, or possibly a personal meridian, as Thomas Jefferson uh, would term it. We've uh, discussed the family relation between Harvey Spencer Lewis and John Bidwell. We know Lewis created the AMORC headquarters, or Rosicrucian Egyptian Museum in San Jose, and uh, his grave is there marked by a small pyramid. Here we actually see the octagon next to uh, Harvey Spencer Lewis's grave that also matches the orientation of the entire block where the Rosicrucian Museum is located points to the Chico City Plaza, another Axis Mundi created by John Bidwell. So it is either a grand coincidence that uh, this geographic uh, relationship exists or uh, it's possible that Mr. Lewis knew of his relation to John Bidwell and orientated, uh, orientated his facility to point this way. Here we can see the octagon right next to the pyramid marking Lewis's grave. Points to the Chico City Plaza created in the tradition of Constantine the Great by Chico founder John Bidwell. The Chico City Plaza also points some interesting directions, which we'll examine later. Well, it's also interesting that the tradition of the Axis Mundi sometimes dictates that its creator is buried beneath that point on the earth. Indeed, here we see Lewis being buried right 
at the center of his axis possibly that he created and there are persistent rumors in Chico that John Bidwell is indeed buried beneath the city plaza. The entire concept of the Axis Mundi explains why this rumor could be true. In 1872, J.D. Hooker visited Chico. This is coincidentally the same year that the Chico City Plaza was dedicated by John Bidwell. On the second trip to Chico in 1877, J.D. Hooker went on a trip to Mount Shasta with John and Annie Bidwell, John Muir, and Harvard botanist Asa Gray. Asa Gray and J.D. Hooker were both part of the Linnaean Society of London. During their trip to Shasta, they stayed at Sisson's and in a camp up on the slopes of Mount Shasta that Sisson had arranged for them. It was during this time that J.D. Hooker revealed his experiences in the Himalayas and the Far East, thus giving us a distant early first connection to Mount Shasta and Eastern concepts. This is possible and may have something to do with the later lore of Mount Shasta. It is just speculation that J.D. Hooker knew about any of the mystical concepts that would be applied to Mount Shasta. What is known is that in 1885, Frederick Oliver wrote a book called A Dweller on Two Planets that introduced many of the concepts uh, to the Mount Shasta area that we see today. Interestingly, in turn, many of these concepts echo Native American myths and legends of the mountain. Here we are at Sissons, one time visited by John Bidwell and some scholars from the Linnaean Society of London, including John Hooker, who the Hooker Oak is named for in Chico. So this is the site of one of the earliest trading posts in the area. Later we would have McLeod come and found Dunsmuir, who's named for railroad magnet Dunsmuir. And in Scots Gaelic, Dunsmuir means Fortress of Muir. So that's an interesting connection even to the family of John Muir and others who came to Mount Shasta at an early time, including elements of the Hudson's Bay Company, including the Lockhart family, who took part in the Battle of Teba, in which James Douglas took the heart of Robert the Bruce into battle. So here we are at Sisson's, and there's this beautiful memorial here marking it and the building you see in the background there is a remnant of the uh, trading post that was here that's been modernized and preserved. So what we have here is a historical marker marking the location of Sisson's Ranch. That was quite a destination for the elite of San Francisco in the late 19th century. So Mount Shasta used to have kind of this elite association with it it's only a train ride away from the Bay Area and lots of people came up here including Lord Caldray. You know, and that's one of the only things uh, I see. He may have built the tunnels in Dunsmuir to facilitate the spring water being used by the town. So that's an interesting aspect to what could have been blown into a myth or legend later as an entrance to Lemuria. So there's lots of uh, elite kind of overtones here of occult happenings and intentionally created mythology on the parts of different groups of people. And we even find the legacy of the possible state of Jefferson that is uh, being considered in uh, Northern California and Southern Oregon. The Indians say the Great Spirit made this mountain first of all. Can you not see how it is, they say? He first pushed down snow and ice from the skies through a hole which he made in the blue heavens by turning a stone round and round, till he made this great mountain. Then he stepped out of the clouds onto the mountain top and descended 
and planted the trees all around by putting his finger on the ground. Simple and sublime. The sun melted the snow, and the water ran down and nurtured the trees and made the rivers. After that, he made the fish for the rivers out of the small end of his staff. He made the birds by blowing some leaves, which he took up from the ground among the trees. After that, he made the beasts out of the remainder of his stick, but made the grizzly bear out of the big end and made him master over all the others. He made the grizzly so strong that he feared him himself and would have to go up on the top of the mountain out of sight of the forest to sleep at night, lest the grizzly, who, as will be seen, was much more strong and cunning than, than now should assail him in his sleep. Afterwards, the great spirit wishing to remain on earth and make the sea and some more land, he converted Mount Shasta by a great deal of labor into a wigwam and built the fire in the center of it and made it a pleasant home. After that, his family came down and they all have lived in the mountain ever since. They say that before the white man came, they could see the fire ascending from the mountain by night and the smoke by day every time they chose to look in that direction. Thanks a lot for joining me for episode one of Mysteries and Legends of Northern California. Here we've laid a groundwork for understanding how Chico is related to Mount Shasta. Next time we'll see how these connections tie in more to the Frenchman's Tower in Palo Alto and the Heights Estate in Oakland of Poet of the Sierra's Joaquin Miller. Joaquin Miller had an interesting impact on the development of Mount Shasta and he hobnobbed with some interesting people in the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood in Europe and then returned and lived on the White House Meridian in Washington, D.C. for two years before returning to Oakland and building his pyramid due south of the peak of Mount Shasta. We'll also take a look at the involvement of John Muir and the Dunsmuir family. So uh, thanks for being here and uh, please come back and see us again. Uh, the mysteries are waiting and we're going to see how everything in the Bay Area connects to Mount Shasta as well and in future episodes we're also going to be taking a look at the more uh, quote standard myths and legends of Mount Shasta including the legend of J.C. Brown and all of the mythology of cities and uh, the hollow earth having to do with Mount Shasta so thanks for joining me I'm Court Lindahl stay tuned for more <music>